I was not working with with uh, like actually uh, a local context and mm -hmm. and as more you you travel you kind of you get this knowledge and at and at certain point I guess I looked back at my uh, place I live in and and so for me this interest comes not from sort of like a, it comes with sort of with, with an experience experience I get actually when I travel mm -hmm. and uh, and then I look at it back and 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 my my approach basically I guess I would say I it's also was influenced a lot by the uh, pandemia the COVID and so you get to spend more time in in Lithuania when you need well I always live here it's not like I spend more but uh, but um but you kind of need to also do some works and then you you look yourself around and mm -hmm. so kind of and of course I grew up here and I know but but it's also in my case it's uh for me it was a shift from doing like site specific works or sort of works which i would develop on on sites for exhibitions switch uh, to more uh, like a studio practice where actually you work where you have a studio first of all mm -hmm. like a studio where you can produce work because i wouldn't have it before mm -hmm. You're saying that studio practice emerged with your focus on your environment in Lithuania? Um, yes, like I wouldn't say that they came exactly together mm -hmm. at the same time, but but definitely yes, kind of um, it 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 sort of helped me to keep the studio in a sense. Like I wouldn't then say, okay, I don't need it uh, because I was actually uh, curious to. To, to work once I did once one one piece like to do more so it's kind of happened somehow organically mm -hmm. but then the studio practice does the studio practice involve fragments of building fabric or when you say studio practice do you mean do you mean different media I more mean like that I have a place where I I, I can I can produce works. Mm -hmm. which are not related to the to the site mm -hmm. to the specific context of the exhibition mm -hmm. it's definitely related then to Lithuania and kind of you can see that then maybe so you kind of you get a studio where you actually develop in, in Lithuania where you develop works about Lithuania so yeah kind of uh, in a way I still kind of kept uh, same same approach as I had in a sense, but for me it is different actually that uh, work wise that you kind of do something and then you actually that thing you can relocate rather than before it was more difficult to then relocate. I haven't really discussed it with any other artists. I, I'd love to explore this more because you actually you said it it's a, again this idea of studio practice so and i just want to understand really so so when you have your studio practice and when you have your site uh, specific practice i wonder how much do they inform each other and can one exist without the other or do you feel like they really are also very connected uh, they're definitely connected because it's kind of was not in a way it was also not forced that i have like a studio practice in the way i was thinking about it mm -hmm. and it just happened that the covid happened and and what that, that and that mean that um, like for example installation the work installation aspect um, it's it's would not change in a sense like i still uh sensitive to the space I, I show even if i bring the work and i think about the relation 
to that space in in in, in some cases I, I can think of uh, and uh, well yeah so kind of uh, I think it goes together mm, and uh, I sometimes I bring more more wanted to say stuff more works uh with me and i i leave myself this possibility to improvise on site so it's not and that's also very similar to the when you develop the work specifically for the site so you have that uh, uh space to to tailor it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But before before this period, because you seem to define it almost as a period, surely it came with the pandemic. What was your practice like before, or how was it was it drastically different? Uh, gym could be an example, like the gym I did for freeze in two thousand sixteen, mm -hmm. because yeah, it's a very different gym I did now for Baza Unlimited. Mm -hmm. uh, in a sense of there basically the origin of that gym was uh my 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 show my work uh made in in Tallinn in Estonia in art academy where i collected some pieces of of students students uh, arts and 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 made a gym out of it and but that work kind of yeah it's sort of the one you can sort of relocate but but the origin of it was um very dependent on a specific situation i found mm -hmm. there in Tallinn, and mm, and and yeah many of my works was done in a sense like um it was more immaterial I mean, gym wouldn't wouldn't be, but but in general, we we would say per you have this overview. It's more exchange, mm -hmm. uh, more uh, yeah, like coming without nothing and leaving without nothing. Mm -hmm. But I mean, also it's very material in a sense, mm -hmm. in many cases, mm -hmm. um, and it's a sort of was like. I was thinking about how to be precise with your work as an artist, like how to speak to a, to a situation, to a very certain situation you find yourself in once you arrive to that place where you will be showing your work. Mm -hmm. And that was very important for me and that was my drive basically and and i was learning a lot through that because uh, especially in the beginning you come uh, you don't have like um, you don't have this sort of confidence you don't have experience and you always and you don't know what you will do and like and if you people you would you say to people listen there is like possibility that maybe i will come up with nothing like nothing will come up like i don't know and 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 that was a bit hard to accept for people mm -hmm. and and you have that actually in art world like as you can talk a lot about sort of how it's diverse how it's free and so on but actually at the end they all want sort of something to be produced in most of the cases not there are exceptions but in general something should happen in a sense so there is no this possibility for mm, for a failure mm -hmm. or failure is a sort of like see uh, it, it 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 then it it sort of have this negative connotation like so failure is like something uh like bad though actually in life when you look in, in life in, in your experience is always a lot about failing as well kind of and that's part of of the game and, and you, not of the game but of the life as well and like nothing good happens without 
failing as well. And so what kind of, and for me was that sort of uh, like a bit funny, I would say, or ridiculous, not funny, but kind of also, so we kind of, I and then I understood that sort of that's, uh, that there is a lot of like, you can, you can test the, the borders of, you can see, you can actually grasp them, not test, but you know, you feel them the borders of the art world, which is kind of a way liberal and like sort of the space where you can do whatever you want. But actually, can you, in a sense, and then so and and, and that was the drive for my works there for all this. Let's like, say if you take the gym, for example, was the gym the work that you were like, okay, I'm going to give you what you want? Or was the gym this thing where you were kind of subverting the environment and maybe making fun of the environment. Um, so, I mean, well, freeze, gym is a bit a bit different to compare. It's not, but it's harder to, to put it as an example. But I mean, I did first in Tallinn Art Academy where it where, was very, so, like that's from where how I would speak about it, not from Freeze perspective. From Freeze, I can add afterwards. But in 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 Tallinn, it was this environment where you have uh, you have this uh, uh, department mm -hmm. uh, academy at that moment were scattered through the city, and departments were in different locations, and there was like a I think it was called sculpture department that's mm -hmm. and uh and it wasn't in the this kind of outskirts of the city of Tallinn and 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 so it was the students who are working there part of the building was like some kind of like studios of artist union mm -hmm. Uh, and and when you say that of older generation, and when you say that in a post-Soviet countries, that means it's basically they do something what they did during Soviet times. Most of them, okay. some of things, some of their things are great, and some are just really out of touch with any life going around. Mm -hmm. And and also an outside of, of this building, it's a kind of a sporting ground where people jogging. There was like a stadium, uh, a bit like forest tree around, sort of. And so that was the environment. And then I looked at the students, and uh, I was student myself, like, mm -hmm. and uh, you, you have this. Uh, somehow I felt like the artist union, these artists, they sort of affect these young students as well, and mm -hmm. and also they were having at that moment. I think they also had tasks to do. It's not always was like in the first grade, so they, you need to do like, a, um, yeah, like a portrait, yeah, of of of, of your of your classmate. All right, and and when you have tasks, that mean like in some cases that you 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 do the task, but you don't have anything, any kind of relation with the work you did while like trying to fulfill that task and and so so you had this some some works which students wouldn't have any attachment to it and they could just take them and and, uh, and also some other art of works artworks which were just left abandoned mm -hmm. and some 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 works I also just borrowed but but that was and then I fought for that sort of context. I will make the gym in a way to look at the stuff they do at the stuff they find find at the environment they find themselves in mm -hmm. from another perspective. 
and, and I made this gym where I invited students to kind of to work out and like experience actually how how heavy it can be what they do literally how much weight it has and also people from outside who do sports like to to get to know the space and actually to to work out so, so that was very sort of kind of context oriented work in a sense it was, it was in a way a response to the kind of education that you were receiving or that you were immersed it, yeah it it was more at that for that gym was more about the education uh in, in Tallinn for later gym was to do my education and and then when 2016 happened and I was taking part at freeze uh so I had all that sort of context and I thought like and then kind of to add when you yeah it was sort of I I was aware that once I bring it it has this dialogue with uh with the fair of course and so that was on point as well but when you talk about um but that's kind of and then this kind of move i could say that yeah that was more like a studio practice move then so so to do that so it can happen i wouldn't say like i i was very strictly there is this sort of time what like i would do this and there's this time i would do more like wouldn't say that but but more or less there is still this division between studio practice and sites specific mm -hmm. works but when you when you talk about these expectations from the let's call it art world for the moment the mm -hmm. expectation that I, I think something that you said that was really interesting is is this idea of coming without anything and leaving without anything and whether that's called failure or whether that's called or whether I mean, in a way, how do we define failure? I don't know. I mean, maybe we can talk about that. But just on that point that you were making about the expectation to produce something or a set of expectations, do you feel like you've signed up to fulfill expectations? And then that led you to a new form of practice? Or are you still actively challenging those expectations i guess like uh, i always learn with the with the work I, I always experiment and i learn from my practice like from doing art actually i learn about about life as well and um mm, i think at certain point for me it was once you do this, this works for what site, a specific site, I, 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 I started to think also about relocation of the works and about bringing the site you, you work for into another place and how, what that would mean. Mm -hmm. And that was sort of a, an organic like entrance to studio practice because that's in my case then what it is like you work with a certain context but then you 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 bring it somewhere else uh, was the art world like some kind of was it was pressured did i feel like a pressure to yeah was is it a, was it a burden uh, that uh, make that i mean it's it's you know it's it's hard to answer like because some things we I can say no but once you in it you sort of uh, you 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 look how other artists works you you, you look um, time wise there's like some factors as well goes together like like in my case you have like you have kids. How much time you can spend home? How much time abroad? How artists, what they do in studios, how they approach their their work, um, 
I wouldn't, I guess, be honest if I wouldn't say that. I guess, yes, maybe I was mm, affected by it. But uh, on the other hand, I also uh, was curious about it myself. And I think it kind of goes together. And But what's important probably to say here that if I wouldn't be curious, I definitely wouldn't be doing that. Mm -hmm. And I, I, and for some time I was not doing that. But then, since when you always like experiment and you look and you try, you always think about it, and it kind of comes uh, also in a way naturally. And uh, when I was doing first work for from Lithuania, I was not thinking I will do more of of these works like it was these wooden houses and like the work was very different to what i have now and like every time i actually i add something or i add not not like a element but add in my approach to that body of work and it's actually quite a journey i had with it though so so in a way doesn't mean like okay so now i have like a studio practice but i just do something same always sometimes it looks the same and sometimes it is same but in general if you will look every year at the work let's say wooden houses they're very in a sense i would say i started from like cutting pieces then i understood like actually it's maybe mm, like maybe i should actually work the whole house as the house itself so i started relocating it i relocated the houses then i thought about like archaeology or contemporary archaeology and like about like how you it, then i started sort of like yeah work treat them and like preserve them and like mm -hmm and show the house through the details actually smaller details then then i also it's a roughly roughly talking about it but then also i started to be interested in the vernacular architecture as a sort of like uh, elements which you can join like blocks and reassemble different structures and some works weird as a not necessarily a house, more like sculptures. Then it started to connect the houses together, houses, different houses from the country. That's what I'm going to do. Some projects in the future from another country connecting. Mm -hmm. And because they have same sort of, you, you can do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, also I collected some houses myself. Like... Mm, also, I work with like I certain point I start to work with roofs as well. Mm. And so you're saying that the things that you are going to do in the future, it's so nice that you went into the future because as you were telling the sort of narrative of where you've been in terms of your work with vernacular architecture, the question was coming to me, where is this going to go? But in a way, you suggested that where it's going to go. Yeah, also like now I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about the like you know people who who used to live in these houses and not like very um, exact people but more like in general um, maybe adding some kind of performative side to it mm -hmm. uh, we have this amazing uh, mm -hmm. sort of like songs Lithuanian nationals, like national, like, yeah, how to say, yeah, songs, traditional songs, all yeah, songs. Yeah, folk, yeah. Uh, where these people who used to think that they would live in these kind of houses, of, for sure, and so you start to think about that as well. That's something I never done yet. Mm -hmm. And I, I will do that for my show in Rome as a one, as an event. Mm -hmm. But then I was thinking maybe as a house, as a sort of maybe house which I can 
because it's vernacular you can maybe turn it into the uh, like a stage I don't know I need to look in that into that can I do that and then to have the performers coming mm -hmm. singers who, who who know how to do that and very sort of mm -hmm. aware of, of 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 traditional singing but when it comes to this idea of, of recognizing similar material practices in in different parts of the world or different countries how do you handle that complexity that's in a way not so rooted in the local culture but there is some kind of weird dialogue happening well, in fact, when did you first encounter uh, a wooden house? Uh, I was in Canada. Like, oh, okay. I worked for, like, Jim as well. It's not coming from, from Lithuania. In Canada, there was, like, a shed. I was doing this residency in Fog Island, and it's, like, an island near Newfoundland. The fisherman community, sort of, mainly historically was mm -hmm. living there and it's around I don't know five thousand people there living something like that descendants descendants from like Ireland or mm -hmm. England I think from there mm -hmm. and um, and they had it's an island where they don't have forests anymore. I don't know, did they had before? Probably they did. Now it's very little. Mm -hmm. And they had this tradition of building houses and also moving them, relocating. Mm -hmm. And also they had this, it's called, they call them sheds. Sheds is like a, like a storage and a house uh, where uh, they basically would have it as a family and let's say grandfather would use the would use it for fish equipment. Yeah. yeah. Something like fish and I, I would not tell you exactly. Like um let's say family would be be doing working with fish and then they would use it for working on fish there. Then the sun would be working less with fish and then you would just maybe just dry it there and salt it mm -hmm. but maybe other job cutting it and everything i don't know they would ask someone else to do mm -hmm. and then the the son of the son so grandfather let's say father and then the son would be the third generation let's say maybe would not be fishing anymore and mm -hmm. just keeping some tools like would be more like a garage mm -hmm. and what that mean that mean that the shed would change also the dimensions the size and 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 and, and since the wood they would not have wood and wood was sort of they would sometimes reuse wood and in the shed you would see some traces of of uh previous structures of the shed alterations and i found this shed like uh, which i learned uh will be destroyed they want to destroy it and and i asked to to kind of give it to me and i got it and and i kind of while we dismantling it the local said oh that's like a should be a fourth so I and I wanted to re-save the house and redo sort of another version of the shed. And then I learned that it would be a fourth version of, of the shed. So like wow, three, of that same of that same shed. Yeah. And so uh, and and I called it like four four sheds show and and it was basically a house which then I made at a smaller scale, like a smaller house which would contain com, contain some dna of the former house some some length but also it was very narrow because it couldn't fit it for the <laughs> entrance mm. but the whole point for that that i will do another version of it in the future 
which I did in for the uh, also in Canada for the Toronto biennial. I don't know, forgot the which was year it was 2000, maybe 22. Mm -hmm. Now it's 23, yeah, probably. Mm. So when I, I use that shed to make into another structure. And the previous shed was just there, left, where you left it during your residency. You were like storing it. I showed it in one show and then they were keeping it. Yeah. Which I should say very thank you for that. Yeah. And did the, the, the shed make its way across the Atlantic at any point? Or? And so we kind of, what, what happened then, the, the, it was sort of a collaboration with the, the sawmill, kind of like a, a person who works with reclaimed wood. And I gave it for kind of these parts after the biennial that he could use it in his own. Okay. For his own projects, which I kind of found also nice, because you then, uh, in a way, it lives in other, um, I don't know how to say objects, let's say, maybe houses, these parts of the house, mm -hmm. the shed, which I find kind of symbolic and very organic to follow the same process. And do you do you do you record those processes of change? What's your uh, what's your process of documenting? Not really, you know. That's a bit of like I think now I do more than before. I have like a, like how it looked like a, in 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 Fogo Island, how it was in Toronto Biennial. In Toronto, it was more like a some kind of obelisk. Well, not obviously, sorry, like a lighthouse. Yeah. In the shape, kind of following the shape of the lighthouse they have in Fog Island. Mm. So I have like photos of these, but I don't. But yeah, otherwise, not really, I guess. But so your process of making it, so let's say the moment when you transformed it into this tower or lighthouse. Was that a very intuitive process of just being on site, laying everything down on the ground and, and sort of starting to build? I'm an architect, so I'm going to ask you from so like, almost like a, yeah. an architect would. Is this drawn? Is this, I mean, it must be in some sense planned out, but how do you then follow the intuition? I mean, in that particular case, it's like, it would be not the, the best case to talk about that because... I was in between basically two, mm, two exhibitions, and one was in in Riyadh in Saudi Arabia, and another was in Toronto, and and I kind of yeah I already agreed I would go to Riyadh, and then so that we were working on remotely, remotely, and. But that's a bit about failures in art world. <laughs> and then when I arrived in Toronto, there was some things which we discussed with the guys from the sawmill that they will do in one way, how I would want. And they kind of agreed everything and, and then they just did their own way. Okay, I I find out that some things are not how we were discussing before, and 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 that sort of was kind of I don't know terrifying and charming together. That's really <laughs> interesting because you see that's what architects encounter all the time. But it's not a thing that artists encounter. I mean, architects always draw because architect is never building the thing. Architect is always in the position that you're describing, being sort of far away, coming to the site, seeing it, and then arguing with everyone. So it's it's interesting that you sort of had that experience. Um, but then we, of course, see artists as someone who's in total control. Yeah, and you kind of to improvise there a bit 
the thing is like I arrives and it's like a one day before the opening and the the light house like the whole idea was like that it would be a fish sort of fish smoker where the smell will go up through that structure and and that would be like a light and the fish would be coming from from, mm. from the uh, Atlantic Sea from the area around somewhere of Fogo or mm -hmm. I mean with fishes like or some kind of same same kind of fish they can catch con can catch there and um and then there was like no possibility to <laughs> have this smoke because this fish smoker was like a fake <laughs> thick fish smoker and so it's all kind of gets even more and complicated to talk about the world because this this another layer actually adds which I was not like which is a collaborative uh, layer, which is which is these nuances of collaborations and working with other people. Yes. Yeah, so and when you you know like everything is like in in emails, like yeah, I got it. We're gonna do it. All clear and like there's no indication that something wrong actually can happen. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> so then you know I just why well, could do just take all the fake stuff away. I basically I arrived to have a look without some kind of with just my clothes and I saw that and I just climbed it with all like just and just ripped it apart like like uh, really like roughly you know just ripped it and just throw it on the ground that's like when artists you know even renaissance artists used to have a, a, a studio and so the artist would just come in the end and do like that was a bit like that but uh, but then we what we did we called we bought this um um, fish smoker and I was just smoking fish <laughs> structure <laughs> which oh, is like there is that on the side there is like a little stove on the side of yes that. yes yes oh, okay that makes sense now and and kind yeah. of now as I speak I find it actually quite you know cute um, and it's good you know I'm not also yeah, that that can happen. Like uh, it's sort of funny, funny enough. Like, but if we if we find a better example, then uh, maybe that wasn't the best example. But when if we find a better example somewhere where you are fully present, what yeah. what is the process like, and where is the kind of following of intuition, or or what's that mm -hmm. dialogue with the objects? Um in any other i guess show but let's say with all this wooden like i did now recent in in rome but also i did one let's say in switzerland in, in chudi gallery so you you bring usually i i just bring more more works than i think i would need that's the first thing um and then i i start from something I know for sure. So I do that. I did that and I look around, okay, what what could be done in a relation to that? Of course, I have the works, but like say in Switzerland, then we had this corridor and there was like these wooden walls, which was not really the plan to have them all like that. But, but then actually, actually I, decided on spot that okay let's put all the walls and create this corridor from wood and I, I i thought because like you had this wooden ceiling but it's a stone and the stone st the ground is stone the walls is stone and and once you put wood actually you have this more attention to the wooden details in the house itself and uh, of course, I was that anticipating also in Lithuania already. Like I was aware, like of course, like if you work with wood, what kind of relation to the wood do you have in, in the location you bring it in? But but I was not exactly sure how I will do it. And and then some other works how you placed it does it 
it's a lot about placement as well for me it's so, important. but just on this point you you say you bring work so so you bring pieces of buildings from Lithuania let's say are most of the buildings the pieces the uh, kind of architecture is that mostly from Lithuania uh, yeah but then you try to connect like I mean this big structure mm -hmm. then it goes and there was some beams actually on top of original beams in from in, from the Swiss from Switzerland okay. in the house so I mean you go with that and you stuck it into that structure and then it gets a bit unclear is it still mine or it's the house let's say and uh, but that was sort of anticipated was yeah that was so it's very hard for me when I also say anticipated actually I don't know the, will, will that work? Maybe I will change. For me, all this is like uh, I'm very uh, how to say struggling a lot. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not sure, you know, because I might change something. I don't know because I'll see. I come and maybe I don't, you know, I will see that some kind of for my in my understanding doesn't work, and I always a bit tense. In that sense, mm -hmm. because some you people think they are they are not. You know, you just know. Okay, it's like this and like this, and you don't think like about changing. And I have that thinking. What What makes it work? Wow, I understand that that works or not, or what's that would be the question. Yeah, how do you know that it works? Uh, it's a kind of <laughs> it's <laughs> very you know stupid answer but you just you just know it when 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 it's think you when you when it's done in the way you want it like is it about how you feel in the space uh, is it about taking a photograph and assessing it in 2d or how do you no 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 photograph but it's more about the meaning you bring and also in a relation to the installa installation is very, for me, important in general. For the installation, you can add meaning, you can change meaning the way you install the work. Is that, is that in some way an overlap between an artist and the curator? Mm. Or there is some kind of curatorial practice within? I mean, for me, I just install. Nobody would tell me how to install. I mean, at least I definitely keep the last. It's. I mean, it's definitely my choice. And then, like, uh, how to say, maybe sometimes it's a discussion, but rarely. Uh, yeah, I usually curatorial side is usually more about than giving another perspective through through a text I guess yeah maybe I, I didn't maybe I didn't make myself clear I, I don't mean necessarily curator as a external person but it's like curator you're also a curator yourself you're also in some way in a way curating the conversation between pieces and yeah yes but I just wouldn't call I don't just don't see myself as a curator. For me, it's just part of my practice. Like I just that's how I approach it. I guess uh, it's just uh, like you did something, but then once you bring, you also you 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 make these relations between. And so you, you come in a space. I'm I'm really curious about this. You come into a space, and you have you have a probably a truck full of things, right? And then you start sort of taking them out and, okay, this works, this doesn't, put this back, or maybe I need to find another something locally. And yes. then you... A lot of caring, a lot of caring usually, yes. And, the, the, and, the, and, then, and then you start to assemble these things. But so, so on one hand, you're assembling in space, right? You're, uh, you know, the physical work of, of moving objects, heavy things. Um, but then on the other hand is that intellectual work, the, the yeah. meaning. And so how, how does this work? Do you write? Do you sit there and 
Is this mm. intentional or? No, I just go and I look and I try, okay, like imagine I see, okay, okay, so it's like this, maybe we turn it that side because there is an entrance, maybe because there the light will be. And then you look, maybe the height. And it's it's something it's more about these decisions I make quite in a sense like this. And it's very it's clear it's where it can work and when it cannot. Sometimes you don't know, then you build, and then you, it's more difficult. Than, and then you you never, the the big part of it is like, you're never sure till, till the moment you build it and looked at it. And it's like, and if you build with the sense that, mm, you know, maybe it's okay, and I have, if I have that, that's not a good sign in a sense. And it's more like, and it's then, it's important just to be true to yourself, like, and and, and actually change it. Mm -hmm. And do, and do you ever have a drawing? Do you ever have a plan of what goes where? Um, like now, I... I mainly now I have more or less sometimes not a plan but I think about it while I do I try to anticipate but also because I have more experience mm -hmm. and I feel like okay maybe I will need something more to bring with me and then I because I kind of have some kind of pre-idea because sometimes also it's about fitting through the the door into the space you need to be aware of that as well and then that's definitely planned usually yeah that's one thing you can't uh, um, um so yeah i guess there are some constraints that are useful as well so it's i guess it's a mix so yeah i have but but the difference is like to understand that it's not like i have like the sketch come with it I just do it and I leave and I'm like, yes, amazing. No, like it's, it's nothing like similar to that in a sense. It's like, though it might be exactly the same, but actually, but I, in my case, I have this possibility. I will change it. And I like to have more days to install. I always keep myself a few, like a day, two days more. Mm -hmm because I might change something. And I know that, that I can. And luckily with these bigger shows I had, that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Everything was fine, just in some cases, some more time, some, some things takes more time than you think. But, um, but there is a chance for it and I'm open for it. And that's a big difference, though it's sometimes maybe not visible. Mm -hmm. So, and I mean, it's just I can't help myself but to ask you whether you there are any architects that you love. Are there any processes that you observe? Because I can recognize the sensibility of, let's say, Car I don't know if you know Carlos Carpa, mm -hmm. uh, an architect um, who very much would come to the site and would just look how sun falls onto the surfaces and would then impose other surfaces and would then put a piece of marble and a piece of concrete and and it's it, his architecture is so uh, dynamic because of his sensing of the place and it's something that in a way i try to teach my students to think like that to be a bit more intuitive and to listen and observe you're an artist and you do that but i just wonder whether you've observed architecture or any architects or or have you tested your approach against some other, I guess, forms of practice? Mm. Yeah, I guess I don't have anything very interesting to say in that that regard. Or, <laughs> I mean, um, uh, I I observe like things in in life in a sense. Some things, let's say in. In Asia, like in Philippines, let's say, um, they they have like this more in, in 
okay or or in brazil in favelas or like you you have these sort of you you build something where you can then readjust differently if, if let's say wave will go and, and like destroy the house which is gonna build it and that was inspiring for me uh, mm, i mean architect uh, so you can uh, adjust they of course don't usually adjust um i yeah how to say i guess like it's not also a good answer i, I just tell i mean the real like um to understand it to explain it is like maybe like that that when i started i didn't have that meaning uh and i'm uh, thinking and and it's i came to it over through my projects and actually so i learned it uh myself because i always experiment and think and learn from myself in a sense how stupid it would not sound i don't know but but you kind of sometimes find yourself oh okay you know also for talking about with people about your your works during exhibitions and mm -hmm. what they think how they reflect and yeah, and so for me it was like a, a sort of a journey where maybe i had i had this sensitivity to it but that was not like very articulated decision but i just step by step came to it where where i'm now where i'm more aware of it but i was not inspired by any architect or my inspiration comes from i guess more from observation of of of, of life yeah i don't i don't want to impose uh, this idea of inspiration i we, i don't i think we we have different relationships different professions have different relationships with it and i think artists have a very specific relationship to this idea of influence so and in a way maybe it's not necessarily whether it's a conversation with with any specific architect maybe it's it's a conversation with another artist. When I saw your work for the first time, I, I recognized a certain dialogue with, let's say, Gordon Meta Clark. Yeah. Presumably, you can't, you can't escape that dialogue. It's simply there. I mean, of course, you, you can accept, you cannot, but it definitely sort of in our, in the context of, of the field, it will be in any case. Um, I guess I always think what is the similarities, what is the differences, and within that and what's your own sort of take on it uh i guess yeah like that more but but in a sense i'm more like on my own <laughs> mm -hmm. i know that it's a bit not how it should be i guess but um no i guess i'm i'm aware mm -hmm. i guess we've spoken about the houses and and we've spoken about this idea that, you know, when you encounter a, an exhibition space, it's, well, I don't know whether that's what you consider when you say site specific, whether the gallery and the exhibition space is the site specific or whether the site specific is that part of the work that takes place in the real world. Mm, I guess site specific is also maybe I'm I'm using these terms not according to the art history. What is like site specific means it's a bit different understanding. Uh, it's not our histo our art historical let's say term. In all that means, I mean probably we would need to say then like context specific. But I just I don't know if I it's a sort of a word games uh it can be yeah that's why i'm kind of okay to use to say site specific mm, because if you literally think about site and specific it can be named like that but i guess to answer it's both 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 ways can be you can bring something with you and you adjust it to the 
situation. Uh, that, uh, that's where I am now, and also where, and before I would not, like five years, let's say ago, I would not imagine myself doing that. Doing doing what exactly? Uh, bringing something from from Lithuania and and placing it. Mm -hmm. And and but I think uh, so 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 I think now this clarifies it and and I think maybe my question would now be in a way about that place that's left. How about the approach to the specific site? Let's say from where you take these uh, fragments. Is that is that seen as as a as a terrain as a space for art of of art? And what's your relationship to that? to the, either the space that's left behind or the space that's still there. And how do you think about that? Um, it's, I guess, something might, what might come in a future, but it's, in many cases, it's like, has this, it's a relation with like how you actually find it, the, the, the let's say the abandoned building. And uh, in most of the cases, there's like the, the owner who doesn't want to have uh, the house. He wants to be, want it to be removed. And, and it's very hard to build like a relation in that situation. Uh, usually there is no one there. And um, and how to say sometimes you get the stories about people who would live there because maybe the person is actually living maybe it's just in this in his like yard and and you can uh, then talk mm -hmm. as well but there is another side of it that we have many abandoned them in this like sort of potentially could be a heritage but it's not because people uh, people not people but um, mm -hmm. because it's a common common people like villagers or how to say would live in it and the wood houses would be not so mm, I guess elaborate like the preacher would yeah and, and and it's sort of this there's some kind of political dimension in in it and also like and they could be a heritage and it will be in like 50 in 100 years for sure it's not now and and it's not in the city center or something it's a rural area we have many of it and um so it's kind of it's seem like to be okay that they're disappearing but and for me it's interesting like this sort of we are in the moment of transition um so i think to answering to your question i more think about it as a generate uh, as a situation in general mm -hmm. in the country rather than uh, a specific because usually they all have the similar traits similar situation mm -hmm. and similarities like they are not needed and when you have this relation that it's, it's the building is not needed then it's already sort of you cut from a certain dialogue with it then you have this house let's say sometimes it's alone sometimes there's some other buildings around it and you you come and you take them you um, basically yes there is no people so you really to talk mm -hmm. around as well so 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 does your work when when it comes to the meaning does it embody this ideas of preservation protection do you think of that yeah i mean the the process of it is kind of like a restoration process i i use the same sort of uh approach but i just do a bit something different rather than restoration but i need sometimes dry it then um, um cover it like with um, 
antiseptic. I, I, I remove have this standing scalp like pieces of of wall which goes like that but then I put it like this standing it's like freestanding they can fall but they like stand and they have this like kind of I don't know this shape almost like anthropomorphic sort of which is like it, it, I get that shape because I just clean the wood because it's it's rotten it's eaten and you by cleaning removing stuff you get that that shape basically and this is like um similar to restoration in a sense and then you you cover it let's say yeah and then you cover it with antiseptic and so you basically you basically allow the the almost like the remaining uh, life to to be exposed um... yeah and but i mean i i uh, of course i kind of also like manipulate with it like let's say some walls you know i dismantle them and put it in parts some i put together some roof i burn mm -hmm. and make them it's a kind of also met method of preservation and in a square some i just don't do anything i bring them some i roof i bring like as a segment of the whole house like just um so you're saying that there are species that you don't do anything to that you just allow them to still yes as well mm -hmm. that like that like in a now in the show in rome mm -hmm. in four of i have that um also uh, sometimes i do piece myself from all old wood because i know how they look like mm -hmm. And I just do what could be you could find, but you don't find, and you do it yourself, which I also find quite interesting. But from the old wood, mm -hmm. it's like and you never actually could record, understand actually that it's it's done. So there's like well, so I guess that's an element of fiction. That's an element of uh... it's 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 more about like a knowledge of. of 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 doing um, of working with vernacular architect with wooden vernacular architecture because at the end is not about building is this is not about the buildings but about the knowledge how to build it mm -hmm. and you kind of learn a bit of that while you do dismantle it mm -hmm. and 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 then you kind of and that's that's how I see it in a sense. Uh, of, and that's my would be main sort of take on it. But of course, there is definitely um, also questioning what is real, what is not real. And, and in general, what is like um, also when you preserving what is like what you need to preserve in a sense. The, the the knowledge or the mm -hmm. the actual object or maybe both probably both you know but um, but and it's so also I just did once it now first time like, you did you did what the... like the 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 the, the, the it's like a part own... part of the roof so the roof goes like that and when the house ends uh so how to say this is like a, a wall but mm -hmm. this part at the end of the house uh triangle which is part of the wall but goes up to the roof um, um yeah that's let's say that's what i did uh, and... so what, you, started, you, you built the roof basically see i built that part segment of it's not the roof but it's like under under the roof like a okay, piece yeah. of wall, wall. Which is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes yeah from the old wood mm -hmm. which could used could be used exactly for that in the shape how it could be used it's but like it's, shape. How you found it. it's yeah yeah exactly but um okay but and that's a form of restoration as well because that's how it's done um so you kind of i could say that that's how you sort of restore and is it is it the way that it's restored 
or not or or that's an element of mm, i guess i don't have mm, i think that's the thing like that's a bit with my practices like that like i don't have an answer as well i do in a sense of like in a conversation treat i know that it kind of makes sense to do it but i and i have i mean or i have a point why i want to do it mm -hmm. but i wouldn't have an answer for the question is it i mean i i definitely uh, I, I I think that the knowledge how to build is uh is sort of how to say definitely important to to keep and also to know. Yeah, the craft. Yeah. The craft. But um and but in my case what I find sort of nice that I worked over um, you know some years over it and and it's like kind of just like naturally like appeared you know it's just also i was not really thinking about it uh like plotting about it oh, i will do this for the show or something no i just like was like two weeks left maybe before shipping and like i like realized okay maybe it would be good to do it and i don't know is it actually even make sense or not at that point and i, I do sometimes like that you sort of experiment in for the exhibition in a sense and you you learn from that and then for me i guess this value is more in my like uh perspective of my own practice and like how you come and like start from a sort of action and how you grow that around. And uh, I guess probably, I mean, probably I will do my own house at certain point from all, from all of that. It, it can happen like sort of, and, uh, and it's- uh, Are you going to do it? Are you going to do it with the leftovers? I guess from the old, knowing knowing me, it's it's definitely I would go from the old house, but that's kind of what I do usually. From the old, you do old house, but that's the same house you just relocate. Mm, I mean, with the logs, technically it's just hard. Mm. Uh, with with the let's say siding. If the house has a siding, then from that siding, you can do other, like you can do that triangle. You can do also from the, let's say from the floor, but with the logs itself, mm, okay. you, what, what you can do, you can replace, you can swap from one house, one logs, another and parts mm -hmm. like, I guess, uh, as now I think loudly uh, it also can be done in other way I guess uh, but somehow I don't see myself using this fresh wood like to do it's not sort of my thing. So, so, so you have a big do you have a warehouse in the studio or do you have or that's your studio is full of these pieces it's my studio. I work outside. I am basically, I just work outside. Like today, I was working, and I don't know, Friday, a whole week before and weeks before. Uh, it's like a, like a greenhouse, like a plastic sort of structure. It's quite big. And what else I have? I have space outside. Some, sometimes I build outside. I, I depended on on climate. Um, we have like winters in Lithuania. Mm -hmm. I mean now now it's like now it's very warm actually. Then was not like this today during the day. Last week was like one, three, you know. 
but that's still fine you know it's more it's difficult when it goes more above minus like 10 it's more difficult like uh, but now so i was doing casting you kind of try to then plan your works accordingly according the the climate sort of uh, the weather mm -hmm. it's like you mm, so yeah i, I did some casting for the so you're, in a, so you're also in a dialogue with the climate because you you know yes. what you can do depending on the weather that, yeah. that's yes yeah also rain so we have rains a lot of rain but when that's does the dialogue with luck as well when does the work get to dry because I, that's one thing maybe that you're missing is <laughs> sometimes it's not dry sometimes it's also not finished as well i finish it like on site already well i guess it dries in italy right that's where that's where it dries i mean in that sense yeah 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 it happened like that and and also now will be exactly now i'm gonna work during the winter we'll work with wood i guess more i can't do any casting mm -hmm. so i think i think we've spoken about the, the this notion of protection and preservation and in some sense reuse in in various ways it's part of the creative process but in terms of this relationship with time and how much do you actually allow work to take its own trajectory you know whether some works are allowed to just live and have life within them it, usually like at the moment i don't have really much wood left <laughs> Like sometimes I what I do, yeah, I just keep them outside. Some I keep inside and dry them. Yeah, I choose what to keep if I'm understood correctly the question. And um uh, some but at the end also I, I usually I don't have any works, let's say now. And usually I don't have any work like works which I just did and they stand there. It's usually this sort of uh, you just running from one mm, like deadline to another deadline, let's say, or something. At least now this month, uh, I don't know, if a year, maybe a bit more, maybe a year was like that. And... Uh, Mm. so I don't have that let's say thinking in terms of works I don't choose what to let's say ship what to leave mm -hmm. the more material wise mm, wood wise let's say yes I had that I have that usually but like but at the moment mm, I don't have much wood left as well. I just shipped a lot of stuff, and usually some of it it looks like uh, how to say it looks like trash, pile of trash, and you still kind of I still use it. Usually I use everything I have, mm -hmm. and uh, which I like is sort of respect to the house, you know. I guess the nature of how you how you organize work and the nature of how you assemble work in a space suggests that you just do that in the moment. And in a way, what I'm trying to explore is how much the work itself changes within the space. Um, the time, you mean? So yes. How much do you feel? Because you say you, you obviously apply certain chemicals, etc. But then there, there perhaps are works where you don't. And then what, what's then the final iteration of that work? Is it just a total disintegration? Yeah, it's sort of, well, sometimes it's bluntly also depends on, on time and, and on your capacity. Like I had this huge sculpture. It's like two houses joined together. And like, I can't, I just don't have also, you know, it would cost so much to to apply antiseptic on it, on all on it. So what I did, I just dry it. I built a wood dryer and I just dried everything. 
and, and that's it kind of i couldn't just do anything else with it also it's like time wise i don't know how much i also need to, <laughs> to do it like and um so so sometimes it's very practical and usually it's like a space of your kind of it's like a extension of your head of your thoughts and uh, you just uh, you place things they're there sort of somewhere and then when the time comes you have this sort of way to choose it either you have that or you have these some treated yeah wood i had actually like that as well which was treated and just placed um but in some cases it's not treated which i treat before mm, so i guess to answer i decided uh really on a basis of of the situation and the situation is related to the exhibition I'm working on, to the context and to the work I want to bring, because from the same wood I can clean, or maybe I don't leave it, leave it uncleaned. Uh, I keep it the whole wall, or I don't keep it like. Uh, it's and are, are we talking here about, let's say, institutional shows? In an institutional show, you don't. Yeah. Have you don't you don't you know the work is not being sold on the spot so it's not uh so it can be anything right it can it can deteriorate and, but yeah but also in the gallery can be the same i also bring to the galleries like that do you also is that also the kind of a, approach when your work is being sold or acquired uh, yeah yeah sometimes i just tell them listen we need to cover it afterwards maybe uh with antiseptic <laughs> I mean, sometimes it's also, also, I just don't have time. It's, it's, in a lot of cases, I just don't have time to do anything like that. At least that's my, 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 my life. My current life is like, if, if someone is interested, it's like, you know, you get up at five. I am. Wow. And you go to bed late. I can, I can. Uh, I mean, yeah, now I would be probably in bed by now, ideally, ideally, but life is not ideal, not because yeah. of it in general, or maybe it is, uh, but you need to kind of follow it. And um, you, so, and, and, you know, it's always somewhere, it's always gone the time, like, yes, yeah. And there's, uh, little, there's very little of it. Kind of, at least I'm currently I find myself in that sort of situation where I'm just fascinated, like how it goes quickly, and and um, so then I choose what is really important, and I do that, and like okay, treatment is something you don't see, and like you know, and then I just sometimes say, listen, okay, we just treat it. I mean, it can also be done afterwards by specialists or... Yeah, so. of course, so just yourself as well. You don't need, like, specialists for, for treating the wood in smaller quantities. Yeah. In big quantities, it's like... It's another story, I would say, yeah. You know, I think it's it's interesting that we started, and, and it's not that we started, but we we mentioned your, you know, the Tallinn uh, Art Academy and your <laughs> kind of emergence from a certain culture of how art is perceived or or taught and i don't want to let you go without addressing maybe the question of what's your relationship with uh, in a way the new generation of artists how are you in some way educating them um, you are certainly educating the public uh, as an artist you you're showing some uh, element of the world that uh, in a way that we don't see it but how do you educate the new generation of artists and then how is the role of an artist changing i mean i don't know do i see myself as an educator first of all i mean um uh, i don't never thought about myself like that i mean also like you mean 
when you say younger generation you mean like i guess more like students i don't know or yes right? very, you are very young uh, i okay. guess i guess i mean artists that um yeah i guess artists that are just coming out of art schools uh, yeah art schools coming I, mean, i mean um yeah well first of all yeah i would say like that i guess so i don't see myself as an educator i don't I, so what that mean it means like i don't do anything like deliberately regarding that mm, yeah i have like conversations mainly it is in lithuania mm, but it's not about it's more about just in general approach to our not to art but to the world i would say more than to the art and um i guess it's it's very you know what i noticed that or what is very i think i understand that you know this um, difference comes i mean like usually artists uh you kind of you grow with your environment which i'm definitely in another environment another generation which forms another environment by environment in this case i mean like sort of uh, mental uh, ideological uh, intellectual intellectual uh, circle wise people connection wise environment than to the people who younger and and they they come with their um, own observation and points uh, if they are um, sort of eager enough mm -hmm. to do that 